We left off last week talking about recovery in your pastures, making sure that you don't let your cows eat the grass down too low. I recommended that you don't let them eat it down below four inches. Over the years, there's been a lot of discussion about resting a field, and that occurs when animals uh, are completely removed from a field. Partial rest will occur with light grazing and low animal impact. Total rest occurs with the total removal of any kind of disturbance for an extended period of time. I and others do not recommend total rest. The ground needs to be disturbed. If nothing else, the root systems need to be moved so it can gather water and also nutrients it needs. When it gets too packed and just sitting, there's a tendency for plants to go dormant and then you lack growth. Animal impact creates a shift towards increased community dynamics in brittle environments. They need the impact of the animals. Animal impact creates a shift towards simple community dynamics with tight plant spacing in non-brittle environments. The object is to not have any bare ground showing. The tool of animal impact occurs through stock density or herd effect. This achieves more of an effect on a brittle environment. So let's discuss stock density. Stock density is the number of animals on a unit area of land at one time. Let's say you have 10 head of cattle on 100 acres. That has a density of 0.1. 10 head of cattle on 10 acres has the density of 1. And 10 head of cattle on 1 acre has a density of 10. In brittle environments, the greater the stock density, the higher the impact. Ultimately, this will produce more feed over time. Animal impact results in the trampling down of old plant material, the chipping and preparing of the soil, and preparation of seed beds. Grazing pressure affects the pasture's regrowth, animal performance, and residue for deeding the soil. Stock density over time equals grazing pressure. For example, animals of stock density of 10 for two days will take 20 stock density per acre. Animals at density of 5 for two days will take 10 stock density per acre. As you can see, stock density can be changed by either changing the number of animals or changing the amount of time those animals are on a specific piece of land. Divisions available per herd affect the recovery period. Over time, the number of divisions available affect the grass pressure. As we have noted this year in numerous areas of the world, the major variable in all this is the environment and those things that affect it. We've had areas this year that have been totally flooded. We've had areas that have experienced record drought. And we've had other areas that have had more rainfall and as a result have had their maximum yield of grasses for their animals to use. Addressing this is what we call adaptive planning. Over time, you adapt your plan to the environmental factors that have changed or impacted upon your plan. Remember, what we are dealing with here are biomes. You're dealing with the rumen microbes, not animals. They're the ones being fed and have to adapt. If animals stay in one place for a long time, microbes adapt to the reduced quality of feed. Animals must readapt when they're moved to a higher quality feed source. They will not effectively utilize high quality forage in the following paddocks until these microbes adapt. One area of recovery not often talked about is fouled ground. Grazers do not happily graze on fouled ground. Higher density more readily fouls the paddock. Fouling does wear off over time, so one must plan around that. Another way to address all this is through multi-species grazing. Multi-species grazing has numerous beneficial effects. It results in parasite control and predator discouragement. It also enhances diverse grazing patterns, utilizing a broader spectrum of plants. Multi-species can be run together as herds or in tandem as follow-through. We've talked about managing the weak link. Here's an example. If there is more feed than animals, there is a product conversion weak link. And if there's too little feed, or the quality of the feed is very poor for the animals, then there is a resource conversion weak link. If you have a resource conversion weak link, place emphasis on the ecology and feed production. Longer recovery periods and higher stock density are important. If there is a product conversion weak link, animal performance is paramount. Recovery periods can be a bit shorter and stock density are not such a priority. In conclusion, grazing planning gets the animals to the right place at the right time, manages the tools to create the future resources required.
Each time you plan, plan from a fresh view, but use information and learning from previous plans and actual performance. Be sure to record these so you have them as a record.